Hello Internet, welcome to the channel. My name is Frankie and today we are playing Planet Zoo Franchise Mode and I'm showing you how to improve your star facilities and make them a bit more personal. When I started this Franchise Mode Zoo Little Asia, I put out a few of the star facilities already in the theme of the Indian theme that you can unlock through research with your mechanics. However, I feel that they take up quite a lot of space and I want to condense them and make it a bit more efficient in terms of the area that they take up within our zoos. With that in mind, I took some of the bare bones star facilities, the ones that aren't decorated at all, and stacked them on top of each other. I then wrapped them in basic building components such as the brick walls and doorways and the ones that have the windows cut out. When it came to choosing which star facilities I wanted to have in this building, I opted for the ones that are going to be used the most across my zoos. And that is of course the staff room and the zookeeper hut. That's because every time I build a new enclosure for an animal, I will hire a new zookeeper and create a work zone for them that always needs to include A, a keeper hut and B, a staff room. And of course the exhibit they're going to be attending. So they are two essential buildings. And then I also added a research center and the mechanics workshop because researching items through both of those buildings is something that I'm doing constantly when building a new zoo. So ensuring that I have multiple of those buildings means that I can have multiple vets or mechanics doing different research tasks at the same time. I stacked them on top of the larger buildings and started to decorate the large open area with some themed fencing. The idea was to have this area be maybe a resting kind of area for the staff. We've got a staff room downstairs. I kind of like the idea of them being able to go up to the terracey kind of area to have lunch or just take a break in the sun rather than cooped up inside. Part of the reason that I'm creating one building that contains several staff amenity buildings is that later on during my zoo build I can just copy and paste this building around the zoo. Having it in the background where guests can't see but still being kind of aesthetically pleasing, still fitting in with the theme and I don't have to remake a building every single time. Saving this as a blueprint later on will really help. Here you can see me picking some buildings that have already been designed from the Indian theme and just taking some inspiration from those just looking at them and then going through the decoration tabs to try and figure out how I want this building to look. One thing that you can see straight away is that it's very flat there are a lot of flat areas so to break that up I'm going to use big slabs of concrete and pillars and stuff just to create kind of borders between sections of the building. For instance, under the fencing that I've put, I'm going to add a stone slab that will act as a kind of barrier separating those two different parts of the building. This very much is a case of jumping back and forth whilst experimenting with different types of decoration. I've got the game on pause for that reason. We don't want any issues going on in the zoo like animals mating or uh, inbreeding and stuff. We need to be able to keep on top of that. So I'm going to pause it whilst I'm doing this kind of activity so that the zoo is, well, it's paused. No issues are going to arise because I've paused it, which means I can really concentrate on a specific thing without worrying about other issues coming up. I would also like to stress that you're probably going to make mistakes at this stage. If this is your first ever kind of building, well, I say building, if it's your first ever non-animal building, then it's likely to not look great and that is fine. We need to experiment, we need to get these bad buildings out of the way so that we can get on to making really good ones later down the road. All of us are going to have some not so good ones to begin with. And you can see I'm really experimenting and there are certain things that I do that I then decide I don't like and I have to double back on and get rid of. That's completely fine, that's part of the reason the game's on pause. Mistakes like this won't have too much of an impact. As I've already mentioned, I'm using a few different in-game blueprints that have already been made by Frontier rather than downloadable from the workshop for inspiration. I'm building those, just popping them up around this building so that I can reference them from time to time if I want. If you don't want to do that, if you want to have a more personal approach, something that is uniquely yours, then you're going to need some resources for inspiration. The main thing that I would suggest for that, and this is something that I've been doing for 
enclosure builds, not so much buildings because it's not something I'm focusing on in this zoo. This zoo is mainly about teaching myself how to build enclosures and habitats that are really good for the animals. Later on, I will start to focus more on buildings and stuff, probably in my next franchise zoo. But for now, I'm focusing mainly on exhibits. So if you want to gather some inspiration for these buildings, my suggestion would be to open up a Pinterest account. Pinterest is a website or app where you can save various images to boards that you create, kind of like mood boards for those of you who have um, created those kind of things in creative projects or at college, stuff like that. Um, you collect loads of images together that have a certain theme that you decide connects them all. That would be an excellent source of inspiration for this kind of project. You could choose certain architectural styles that you really like, start to gather various images and group them all together so that you can reference them later. So that is a big tip for not just for the buildings, but any type of design within this game. Consider creating some Pinterest boards or if you want, if you primarily use things like Instagram, you can of course save various images on there instead. My, the point is, if you want inspiration, maybe start to save images in a place that you can easily reference for this kind of thing later on. And whilst this building doesn't look sensational, it doesn't really fit the Indian design, I don't think. It's, uh, it definitely looks like some weirdo made it by himself sat in front of his TV, which is exactly what's happened. Um, whilst that may be the case, doing this, this kind of exercise of using all of these different building components, rotating them and using the advanced build tools, doing this repeatedly really, really helps you to understand the building tools. So if you're still not fully understanding of how all the advanced movement tools work, I would suggest that you do set yourself a little project like this and set out to create something a bit different to what you're normally creating. Because like I said, I'm mainly focusing on exhibits and enclosures. But doing this really forces me to stretch my muscles and it will be useful when you actually come to build the things you enjoy a bit more later on. So familiarizing yourself with the advanced move tools and stuff is a really good byproduct of building something like this. And as we are starting to head towards the end of this particular build, I would just like to give you my top bit of advice, I guess, for making something that looks half decent, and that is decorations. Don't just create a blank shell. Although this will do the job, it's not that much better than the insulated boxes that you originally get for the staff buildings. Adding decorations just adds a bit of life to these buildings. You can see how the hanging, uh, what do you call them, the tapestries with the elephants and these buntingy pieces with the flowers on them and the window frames, all of those little details add so much to this building and just make it, well, it takes it from quite bland to instantly a bit more interesting. So add little things like this to give these buildings character. They don't cost you much in terms of in-game money. It's really not that much. and time wise it's just a little bit of time spent that goes quite a long way in terms of how this building ends up looking so i would strongly suggest that you experiment with different types of decorations and see what kind of look you can achieve if you like the look of what i've done here and you agree with me that the keep hut staff room research center and the workshop are the most important buildings for your zoo then you'll be happy to know that this particular build this staff building is available on the workshop on console edition so you'll be able to find it there straight away it's live at the moment all you'll have to do is connect the paths to these two buildings that are up in the air which is completely fine it's pretty easy to do and i will show you how to do it right now in the paths tab with the work path selected, it should automatically suggest for you to join a path to one of these floating doors. Once you do that, I keep it to a very short length and angle it all the way around as far as it will go to a 90 degree angle so that we can then connect the next door to this path, creating a lovely semicircle. 
From there you need to adjust the height of your path so that you connect it to the ground and you do that by holding either square on the PS5 remote or X on the Xbox remote and then you can change the angle at which your path is going. Here you can see it turned into stairs, lead it to the ground, get it to the correct level and then join it to any existing staff paths that you have. If you found this video useful then make sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel to see more videos like this turning up in your subscription feed. Thank you for watching and until next time I'll see you later.